With Halloween around the corner, this is the kind of candy I want. Let's talk about electronic modules and how they evolved over the years. Similar to how PCs were expanded using ISA bus and then PCI, PCI Express, etc., there was a need to do the same on electronic circuits. And Arduino did this really well. I found this board, Arduino compatible board from SparkFun. And uh, this is not the original Arduino, but Arduino started this very long time ago. And they had like a really cool concept where they had like this standard headers on the side. And then there were shields that go on top to expand that uh, circuit with maybe a display, uh, maybe ethernet, maybe whatever the need might be. Like, yeah, you would add a sound card on an old computer that didn't have audio by default. You would add a sound card and now you have audio. And similarly, you would have an Arduino that just has a, a microcontroller and add a, a, a sound card. It's not really a sound card, but you had like maybe an MP3 decoder on there and now you can play MP3 sounds. You had ethernet and you have ethernet connection. Uh, this worked out really well that was even carried on by other companies. So BeagleBoard, for example, this is uh, BeagleBone Black from BeagleBoard. Uh, similar, they had a similar concept, but they called it, in, instead of a shield, it was uh, called cape. So there are uh, several capes available for that, so that's another option. And then there's also Raspberry Pi. Now with Raspberry Pi, similar, uses the same concept, and this is like just an example here, but uh, these were called hats. Hats, capes, shields, they all mean the same thing. It's a way to expand the motherboard. So these worked out really well, but there was like a, a little problem here. When we talk about a, a uh, hat or a shield or a cape for a specific board, these only work on that board. They're only compatible with that board. For example, so if we take like an Arduino compatible board, a, uh, a BeagleBone Black. I cannot take the cape from the black and put that on an Arduino. Similarly, I cannot take the shield from an Arduino and add that on the, um, on the other board, the other uh, processing board. So to solve that and to add way to expand products, um, companies start making something like this. Let me show you a few examples. So these are little breakout boards that might have, like this one has LED, uh, for example. This is like an infrared uh, receiver, a speaker, etc. And they all share that same three pin pinout. And the reason of that three pin that's became somewhat of a standard, it's the original servo motor. So these servo motors, they, these are very, very old and they've been around for a very long time. They are used on remote controlled uh, vehicles and um, they have the connector on here. It's basically uh, ground uh, voltage and then signal. And these carried on that similar concept. So now you have that connection and then you would, like for example, this is a relay, similar wire, and these will plug into a main board and now that gives you access to uh, those accessories. Now, these worked really well, but there was a problem. We're talking about three wires, so power, ground, and signal. One signal is not enough to do a lot of things. It's good for a relay, good for a sensor that just reads uh, like a signal or control a signal, just one signal. But then what if you have um, like a device that needs a bus, you need to transfer data digitally. Uh, and this is where uh, Seed Studio, I only have several here, I'll show you a couple examples, started making these little modules. So this is a distance sensor, uh, I believe this is like a uh, this is like a ball here that you can do use, use to uh, detect finger movement. Uh, I'll show you another example. Uh, this is a display. Anyway, they're all the same. So they added a fourth fourth pin. So now you have four pins: power, ground, and two pins. There can be two digital pins like we have over here, or it can be an I2C device. Uh, that is that uses I2C bus is a, a digital bus where you tr tr you can transfer data through the bus. So you're communicating with that sensor. That sensor, for example, good example would be an accelerometer. So you have an accelerometer that's reading X, Y, and Z, and then through I2C you're reading that accelerometer. And this is an example cable of how these would connect. And here's an example board of how you would connect these to a circuit. So a, cir a, uh, a circuit can go over here. 
and then the cable would go between these sensors. It gives you more, gives you that additional pin that gives you more functionality. And then around 2010, Microsoft Research released, uh, and we were the launch partner at GHI Electronics, uh, Gadgeteer. And Gadgeteer, here are some of the modules we have left. You guys have bought them all. Uh, so those, the difference here is the Gadgeteer module added a 10-pin connector. So let me show you some examples. So this is like a USB serial, virtual serial USB to Gadgeteer. Here is a Gadgeteer cable with a, an infrared receiver. Uh, what else do I have here? Okay, maybe a simple button. USB host. Now, having 10 pins opened a whole new world of options. And there was this lovely pinout table that we, uh, or lookup table, or a table of what the available um, connections are. So every socket had a label. So let's say it's S for SPY, or I for I2C, or X, that's just a uh, um, GPIOs. So these different kind of sockets, each socket had like a specific bus or a service that can provide. And dif different modules have like their label, so the S module connect to the motherboard, so a motherboard can be this, for example. Anybody remember this? Cerberus? Um, so this would connect, so these sockets are labeled with what they support, and the socket will connect to that specific module. And this opened the world to all kind of options. This was very, very successful. We have sold hundreds of thousands of these modules, but then sadly we had to discontinue that. I want to get back to this in details in future because we have something that's been cooking on the back burner for a while. So we'll get back to this. Uh, but uh, today, that's, that's, that's all we want to share for, for Gadgeteer. And then in 2011, a company in Europe, Microelectronica, started making uh, what they call a microbus. They, de they defined a microbus connection, and microbus just like uh, Gadgeteer, it, had, it has SPY, UART, I2C, some GPIOs, analog, PWM. All these are predefined on pins, and that allowed for creating modules. This is the back. This is the front. And these plug in. There is no connector in this case. They plug in. And these are, I believe, uh, 8 by 8. So there's 16, I believe, 16 pins on these. And there's, I mean, we have so many of these. We use them on our development boards. These serve really well on, on, a commer on the commercial space because they plug in, they sit in there. So this is Ethernet. Um, what other options do we have? We have a lot. So there's Wi-Fi. And these plug into a board and they give you a way to expand. And then with 16 pins, you really have so many options. Now, what Micro did really well is they went Re, they went click, they call them click modules. They went click module crazy, absolutely crazy. They have thousands of these. So when, when I was impressed when they had a few hundreds and I was happy to add it in a, in a, in a product. But then with the thousands they have on the market, like we are, it's, it's an automatic option. When we design a, uh, like a, a, a product, we would just add two female headers, eight and eight pins to support Microbus. And then you have just over a thousand, maybe over two thousand options by now. Now the downside to these modules is that you have to have some basic electronic experience. You need to know schematics, you need to understand what's going on. They work well for professional space, for maker space. They can work. I mean, some of you are just are the masters of figuring it out and you can make it work. However, when we go back to the Arduino example, just, just for example, so again, Arduino compatible board and then a shield. The shield is made for that board. There's really no needing of you to understand anything because it's an Arduino software, an Arduino motherboard or compatible board that still run Arduino software. And then you have an Arduino shield with a driver for that shield. You put the, the shield in, you drag the driver into your software and everything just works. That is not the case if you have different motherboards with different uh, processes, with the processors, 
maybe even different languages. Some like Python, MicroPython are very popular today. And maybe you want to use MicroPython. Maybe you want to use C++. Maybe you want to use C Sharp, DynaCLR. How would you know which driver and what, what, what driver and how to translate the driver and make things mesh together? It's, it creates a little bit of a challenge right there. Now, to solve that, Microsoft came back with a thing they call JackDuck. And here are a few examples. What's different about JackDuck is that they are using a special made connector. And that special made connector has an advantage. It does not use a connector on the PCB side. It uses the PCB itself. It plugs right in. So the cost on the, P on the module is zero. Um, just like um, gold plated pads and then the connector plugs right in. So an example, here is another one. And then the cable can go on and on to, to the motherboard. So that's on the hardware front. Now on the software front, they have created this uh, driver ecosystem that just uh, that's automatically detects the, the it's a single wire bus. And there, so there are three only three wires inside the wire. They're trying to keep this very low cost. There's power and ground and there's signal, but that signal is not GPIO like we had on this for example. This is just a on off high low state where in JackTag it's an actual bus. It uses UART, but then it's like a, uh, a two-way UART. Anyway, a high-speed UART, two-way on a single wire, and now you're talking to the modules. A small micro lives on that module that handle that, uh, that specific bus. Um, and there are all kinds of services on the, on the module front. They even went beyond that, and they built these services on a website. So if you go to JackTac website, you can add a button, the virtual button on the computer, and then you would see it on your browser, and that would be a virtual button. And this connects to a board, to, a, to um, LED, a real life LED, and you can use the virtual button on the screen to control the real life LED. It all works beautifully together, but it's, it's, why it's, it's quite complex of how it all fits together because it's, it's, it's very dynamic and it works with everything, like from a PC browser to hardware. It works really well, but then fitting it all together, it takes a minute to wrap your head around how a virtual button on the computer, on a browser, is controlling a, um, an LED that is physically connected to the computer. Uh, so this is new standard. Um, some companies have picked it up and they are offering uh, these modules. So you can, you can Google these modules on Amazon. You'll find them if you want to uh, give them a try. Uh, I forgot to show you some examples. So this is LED, um, a potentiometer, uh, a button, I'll show you a button, etc. Joystick. So there are a few. And now to simplify all this, I'm not sure who started it first, but SparkFun and Adafruit started using these really tiny JST connectors. Let me show you some examples. So this is a, a SparkFun joystick, and this is an Adafruit display. They both use that same cable, same connector. Uh, SparkFun calls it quick. Uh, Adafruit calls it Stemma or Stemma QT. Uh, I'm not sure I understand which, what's the difference. But uh, these connectors, uh, they are standard JST, very tiny connectors, very small, very low cost. And they, have, and they chose four pins. So you have similar to um, Groove, for, uh, for in fact. Actually, there is a cable that goes between that small connector and the larger uh, Groove connector. So this is size comparison right here. It's a much larger connector. So what they did here is they said, OK, this is going to be I2C always, which is nice. Now you don't have to worry about it's GPIO or it's not GPIO. It's always I2C. And in the case where the, the specific module is an I2C, uses I2C bus, like in this display example, there was no need to do anything special. The connections, the SDA and SCL pins, go from the connector directly to the display. Like in this case, an accelerometer would be another example. But then there are cases where you have a joystick. Well, a joystick is an analog, XY analog plus a push button. 
those three variables that are on the joystick are transferred over I2C through a small microcontroller. You can see that okay, there is a very tiny micro on board that reads a joystick and provides that over I2C bus. And because it's I2C, the way I2C work, you can chain devices. So you can see there are two connectors on the joystick, two on, on the display, meaning I can plug in the, uh, the display to the joystick. And now from a, a, uh, a microcontroller, I can read the joystick, draw something on the screen, all using that same wire. There's length uh, limitation, of course. Uh, there's power concerns, like when you go really long. But if you're connected to four or five things, this works uh, quite well. And this was picked up by other companies. So I have seen a couple other examples from companies that started adding these little connectors to their modules. Like some of them already have I2C modules, but they did not have the connector, and they started adding that connector on it. So it's, it's kind of becoming a, a standard um, naturally by, by evolution. Uh, it's small, it's been used and tested, it works well, I2C bus is easy to deal with, there is an address where you address the slave to read and write from that, and it seemed to be working, and it's being adopted. Another concern with these modules is the addressing. So in I2C, there is a, an address for each device. Uh, it's called the slave address. And the master, which is the microcontroller, that's sending a, a, uh, an address, and then it's talking to that specific module, what happens when you have two joysticks or two displays and they both have the same address? That would not work. So the solution was is to add like a little jumper on the back of the board. I believe this one has it. Some of them do, some of them don't. Oh, I can't see. Oh, I see it right here. I believe this is the address right here. Right here. So you can add that little solder on there and it bumps up the address by one, typically. So whatever the address is, plus one. So now you can connect two. Well, what if you need three? Well, why would you need three displays, or two for that matter? Well, it's, it's the concept, it's to making it work. Uh, so that, that is a concern. The length, like I said earlier, the addressing is also a, a concern. But otherwise, this works quite well. And this is not everything out there. There are other standards, other modules, other shields, other um, uh, standards of how to connect uh, um, modules to main boards. There's like SPI bus, for example. Some of them use SPI to give you a speed, which is I2, SPI is a lot faster than I2C. Some have multiple buses like we've seen earlier. I'm sure you have seen other options. I just wanted to share some of what we have here, all the toys that we use in our research at the company. And this is also a segue towards a future video that I want to talk about. Wink, wink. Um, happy Halloween, and we'll see you next week.